Good morning and welcome to the April 8th, 2024 regular council meeting. We're going to start off with a public hearing. So I declare the public hearing for bylaw 2059-24 open at 0900. I'll ask planning and development to explain the purpose of the hearing. Welcome. Oh, just make sure your mic's on, please. Sorry, I turned it off. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to receive public input on bylaw 2059-24 to amend the land use bylaw to redistrict a portion of NE 1346-24-4. Has notice of this hearing been provided in accordance with the applicable legislation and the bylaws of the City of Otasquin? Yes, the public hearing was advertised as follows. On the city website and whatifwatasquin.ca as of March 26, as per the requirement from the Municipal Government Act, Section 606. It was also advertised on city social media pages on March 26, advertised in the Pipestone Flyer on March 28th and April 4th, and notices were sent by mail to property owners within 76 meters of the parcel on March 26th. I'll now request that Planning and Development provide the report regarding this matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, planning and Development received an application to rezone a 1.38 hectare portion of NE 1346-244 from UR Urban Reserve to R4 High Density Residential to facilitate the development of a multi-unit residential building following the anticipated subdivision of the rezoned portion. The subject land is located on 56th Avenue and the future extension of 40th Street, just south of Park Grove Road. Adjacent developed uses are low density residential to the north and west of the site. The land is subject to the East Residential Area Structure Plan, which identifies the subject land as one of two higher density multi-unit residential sites planned at the north entrance to the neighborhood. Uh, and the subject land includes a portion of a wetland. The applicant has received provincial approval for development and construction work that will impact this wetland, including the incorporation of a portion of it into a planned stormwater management facility and open space. Have we received any written submissions? And if so, can you please read them into record? Uh, administration has received three written submissions. Uh, so this is the first letter. Dear City of Wetaskiwin, I am writing to express my strong opposition to the proposed housing development in our neighborhood. Bylaw 2059-24, a proposed bylaw to redistrict a portion of any 1346-244 at approximately 56 Ave and 40th Street, from UR Urban Reserve to R4 High Density Residential to allow for the subdivision and development of a multi-unit residential building. While I understand the need for affordable housing in our city, I believe that this project would have a detrimental impact on our community. First and foremost, the proposed development is simply too large for our area. The increase in population density would put a strain on our already overburdened infrastructure, leading to increased traffic congestion, noise pollution, and strain on our public services. Additionally, the construction of this project would result in significant environmental damage, destroying natural habitats and putting wildlife at risk. Furthermore, the type of housing being proposed is simply not in keeping with the character of our neighborhood. This development would bring in a large number of low-income residents, which could lead to increased crime rates and other negative social effects. It would also drastically alter the aesthetic of our area, replacing the existing greenery and open spaces with a monolithic high-density housing complex. Finally, I am deeply concerned about the impact this development would have on property values in the surrounding area. The influx of low-income residents could result in a decline in property values, making it difficult for current residents to sell their homes and move elsewhere. In conclusion, I strongly urge you to reconsider this proposed housing development. While I recognize the need for affordable housing, I believe that this property is simply not the right fit for our neighborhood. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Sincerely, April. Uh, second letter. While I understand the incorporation of open space for stormwater management and green space functions in the East Wetaskiwin Area Structure Plan, I believe it's essential to consider the irreplaceable ecological functions of wetlands. Although stormwater reservoirs serve certain purposes, they cannot fully replicate the intricate ecological benefits of natural wetlands. Wetlands play a vital role in biodiversity conservation, flood mit mitigation, water filtration, and carbon sequestration, among other ecosystem services. They contribute significantly to the overall health and resilience of the surrounding environment. Stormwater reservoirs, while helpful in managing runoff, typically lack the same level of ecological benefits as natural wetlands. Furthermore, while I acknowledge the approval of wetland and watercourse impacts by Alberta Environment and Parks, I believe it's crucial to address broader environmental concerns and ensure the long-term sustainability of the proposed development. 
In conclusion, rather than impacting the wetland, I urge the city of Wetaskiwin to consider leaving the entirety of the wetland intact and instead focus on adding a trail system around the wetland. This approach would allow residents to enjoy the natural beauty of the area while preserving its ecological integrity. Thank you for your attention to this matter. And uh, third letter. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my letter. My name is Janessa Matthew, and I would like to say that I oppose bylaw 2059-24. While I recognize and agree that high-density residential does need to be developed in our community, construction on a wetland is not the solution. Not only are wetlands integral to preserving a healthy environment, but also their destruction is costly and timely to develop. I highly recommend that the East Wetaskiwin Structure Plan be adjusted to accommodate our local wetland for the following reasons. First and foremost, it is crucial to acknowledge the ecological importance of wetlands. These ecosystems are not mere patches of water. They are vital habitats for numerous plant and animal species. By building on wetlands, we risk disrupting these delicate ecosystems and jeopardizing the biodiversity that sustains our environment. Furthermore, it is essential to recognize the dr that dry stormwater ponds cannot adequately replace the functions of wetlands. Wetlands serve as nature's sponge, absorbing and storing excess water during heavy rainfall or storms, while also seeping water into the surrounding area during times of drought. Dry stormwater ponds, on the other hand, lack the biodiversity and natural filtration capabilities of wetlands, rendering them ineffective substitutes. Building on wetlands and relying solely on dry stormwater ponds for flood control would leave our community vulnerable to increased flooding, water contamination, and less water during times of drought. Additionally, the, the development of wetlands poses significant risk to public health and safety. Without wetlands to naturally regulate mosquito populations, there is a danger of mosquito-borne diseases, West Nile virus, spreading throughout our community. Wetlands serve as breeding grounds for many mosquito predators, helping to keep their populations in check. By destroying wetlands, we disrupt this delicate balance and invite the proliferation of mosquitoes, putting the health and well-being of our residents at risk. Moreover, wetlands present a unique opportunity to create a natural area in an urban environment that lacks trails. Preserving wetlands provides residents with access to green spaces where they can enjoy recreational activities, such as bird watching and nature walks. These natural areas contribute to the quality of life in our community and enhance our overall well-being. Finally, it is essential to consider the financial implications of building on wetlands. Development in wetland areas is often costly and fraught with challenges. Many homeowners in areas where wetlands have been developed experience frequent basement flooding and sinkholes, leading to costly property damage and increased insurance premiums. By pre preserving our wetlands, we can avoid these costly and disruptive consequences and ensure the long-term resilience of our community. In conclusion, I urge you to pr prioritize the preservation of our wetlands and reconsider any plans for development in these ecologically sensitive areas. Let us not sacrifice the invaluable ecological services provided by wetlands for short-term gains. Instead, let us work together to protect and restore these vital ecosystems for the benefit of our current and future generations. Thank you for your attention, Janessa Matthews. I'll now call upon anyone who wishes to speak directly to council on this matter. First, we'll call upon those who registered prior to the meeting, and then anyone else who wishes to speak may have the opportunity also note, you'll have five minutes to speak to the matter. And first up, we had Carrie Reed registered. Nope. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Anyone else wishing to be heard? Third and finally, anyone else wishing to be heard? I'd like to thank the three letters that we had submitted to council. We'll discuss and debate this matter in a future council meeting following Alberta Transportation's response to the road closure approval package. I declare the public hearing closed at 0908. Start off with number three, open microphone. First off, we have Audrey Bannister, please. Good morning. I just want to address a couple things from the last meeting when I spoke. Uh, number one is that uh, about Hope Mission and where I made the statement about Willie Littlechild, that was told to me by someone else and I can't divulge who it was. But as far as the medical people, uh, they are clients of mine and they did tell me that they were not allowed to enter the HOPE mission. And any time any one of you or Sue, the fact finder, wants to come to my office and meet them, 
they're welcome to come because it is a fact. The second one is about uh, me calling, and I've been practicing it, Muskochis, calling it Hobima. I guess those people that got on me and called me racist and everything else better talk to the TELUS phone book also because it's in there as Hobima. Uh, I've had a lot of fallout from it, a lot of name calling and stuff, and I'm sure there's going to be from a lot of people like R.J. Milton Berger, uh, Kyle Christensen, Jesse Hanks, uh, Justin Rexer, and uh, Colin uh, Carbonic. It goes on and on. I'm just saying I don't like being called a liar. And Sue, if you'd like <coughs> to come down to my office and meet these people, you're more than welcome any time. So just have your fact finder. Make sure they are facts when she puts them to paper. Thank you. I guess two big lessons that we can get out of this is that if you hear something secondhand, you should probably find out first to make sure it's true before you come and, and display it in a public I absolutely in a, agree in a, pub, with in a that. public meeting. And the other thing is, is if you don't like being called names, you should probably not get into the same kind of thing or in the same kind of group that is doing the same thing to other members of our community. I have the right to come and speak my mind here Absolutely. as everybody else does. Absolutely. I'm just saying that if, if, if you're not in favor of being called names, it would be a good opportunity for you to maybe make sure that everybody's not calling anybody names as opposed to just I the ones directed that, at you. I agree because I totally disagree with what's going on and some of you guys that say you're not on social media should get on there and not block the people and have a look and see how terrible it is out that right now oh, I know and how what terrible is, it is going on in Wetaskiwin. And maybe come down to the south end of town at seven o'clock in the morning and stay there till 10 when the liquor stores open and see what's going on down there. Then you'll see what's happening to Wetaskiwin. It's terrible, it's disgraceful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One of these days, I'll make it. Next, we have Debbie Hunker. Good morning. Um, there is, again, we're going to be talking about disinformation. There's a significant, significant amount of disinformation that's being spread about me and the reason for this recall petition by the mayor. Um, this is not about a personal vendetta, it's, and it's not about the shelter, um, and I will continue to fight against the shelter. The petition was initiated because the mayor of Wetaskiwin is not listening to the citizens of this city. The motive is actually to protest against the ridiculous decisions being made by this mayor with the approval of this council, and also the lack of <coughs> accountability, which is exactly what the legislation was for. We might not get enough signatures to uh, get the mayor removed from his position, um, but I can hardly wait until 2025 when we can have a new mayor and council, because then maybe we'll have a chance to get the city back on its feet. Some of the decisions. You sold the Memorial Arts Center itself for 400000 not including the parking lots, but there wasn't even so much as a realtor's appraisal done on it prior to putting it up for sale. The reasoning, to the best of my knowledge from conversations with council members, was because of the yearly cost of it and the estimate of $1 million in upgrades over the next 10 years. But council was ready to pay $1.2 million to dredge by the Lake Park. Then the estimate changed to $2.5 million, and I'm not sure if that's still being considered. You also sold the Civic Building for $400,000 when the appraisal was $800,000. And if that wasn't bad enough, we are now leasing the basement for the archives for $2,818.99 per month on a four-year lease. In four years, we will have paid $135,311.52 back to the buyer. Now, common says, sense says that it would have made more sense to keep the building and rent out the upper floors. Perhaps some of the new business our economic development officer is bringing in could have been a good fit there. Then there's the fancy new public works building that we are leasing because we needed more room. 
well, why do we need more room when we've sold so much equipment and are paying outside contractors for our city services? And why does the public, um, and does the public know that we gave away the library building and are leasing it back? Well, we could have moved the library into the civic building and been ahead financially. Now, I'm going to go back to the situation with the homeless shelter for a moment because I think it's very important. I've been contacted by many people from many walks of life who have been affected by the influx of homeless to our city because of the shelter. These people can't come forward publicly because to do so goes against the professional associations they are bound to. Members of this council have been contacted as well and know that Hope Mission's claim that they are taking pressure off of our services is completely false. To allow these lies to be accepted as facts makes it disinformation. The hospital ER is being overrun with homeless, and the point that Audrey was trying to make is that there are a growing number that have not been in the province long enough to have Alberta health care. Now, it proves that the homeless are coming from other provinces, not just other cities. Hope Mission is also known to send people to the hospital, then refuse to take them back because they are too much work for them. This means it's up to other supports to find placement for them. Now, Councillor Blatz's claim that Hope Mission has found placement for 40 is complete misinformation. If it was factual, then Wetaskiwin's homeless situation would be taken care of since we only had that many to start with. Now, according to social media, it's common knowledge that Mayor Gandam doesn't intend to run for the next election. <laughs> well, I don't know. R.J. Mildenberger says it as a fact, so anyway. Um, so why do you want your legacy to be as the worst mayor Wetaskiwin has ever had and the one who brought ruin to this city? This entire council is going to go down with this sinking reputation, too. Now, I am one person with no real power, fighting for this city with everything available to me. I'm standing up for the citizens of this city that for many reasons can't stand up to City Hall on their own. I don't get paid, and the only benefit to me is the improvement of the city that I call home. Now, some of you councillors see what is happening here is going to be detrimental to Wetaskiwin. Why are you not using the authority given to you as elected officials to stop this? You literally get paid to represent the best interests of ratepayers of this city. It is time to do what's right. Thank you. Looking for an approval of the agenda. So moved. Thank you. Any additions or deletions? Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried. Item five, adoption of the minutes from the regular meeting minutes of March 25th. Thank you, any errors or omissions? Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried. Committee of the Whole, we didn't have anything listed in the consent agenda. Um, item 9.1, Delegation, Wetaskiwin Air Cadets Parent Sponsoring Committee. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Sidney Furness. Uh, I would like to thank you for allowing me to present on behalf of number 42 Wetaskiwin Air Cadets. So, number 42 Wetaskiwin Royal Canadian Air Cadets is part of a national nonprofit organization that has been operating out of the drill hall and attached shooting range and offices since it was established in November of 1941. The drill hall and the range were originally constructed by the military in the early 1940s for their use when they established the Army Training Center in Wetaskiwin during the Second World War. 
Our squadron has been operating as a free program for youth between the ages of 12 until their 19th birthday for 83 years. The Air Cadet program provides programming for local youth with aims to develop the attributes of good citizenship and leadership, promote physical fitness, and stimulate an interest of the youth in the sea, land, and air activities of the Canadian Forces. Our motto is to learn, to serve, to advance. Each year the cadets complete a training program that is structured much like a school curriculum. In their first year, a cadet learns many new skills, some of which are following instructions, showing respect, caring for and wearing a uniform properly, citizenship, team building, and drill to name a few. The program is accomplished through regularly scheduled classes with the senior cadets becoming the mentors slash instructors of the cadets. Mandatory instruction takes place on Thursday nights from 6.45 till 9.30. Tuesdays are our sports and optional training nights from 7 to 11. The cadet program is set up that the cadets learn new skills and develop more confidence as they progress through the program. Drill slash marching is an important aspect of the program. It helps to build a cohesive unit and develop a spree de corps. Cadets from Wetaskiwin have competed and won at numerous zone and provincial championships. They won this through dedication, determination, practice, and undivided attention. The ultimate challenge of cadet drill is called precision drill, which is a memorized sequence that the best cadets perform silently without any commands. Wetaskiwin Air Cadets has hosted many drill competitions over the years. Cadets from across the province, along with their staff and families, would come spend weekends in Wetaskiwin, spending money at local eateries, hotels, and other businesses, while coming to support their cadet in this unique skills competition. To accomplish the progression each year in cadets, involves more in-depth knowledge in citizenship, aviation, leadership, survival, and drill. Gliding and flying courses are offered for senior cadets who have the aptitude and motivation to fly. Number 42 with Tasquin has been lucky that over the years we have had three past cadets become members of the Snowbirds Aeronautical Demonstration Team. Captain Glenn Kerr, Captain Wes McKay, and Lieutenant Gord Wallace, who came back to command the Snowbirds. Citizenship is a very important aspect of the training program. To accomplish this training, we have done the following activities. The Legion Annual Poppy Campaign, Remembrance Day Setup, We Parade, We Take Down, Laying of Reese, and the Cenotaph Honor Guard. Coat Check for Local Events, Helping Service Groups with Pancake Breakfasts, Tractor Pull Cleanup, cleaning and washing dishes after Christmas banquets, delivering pamphlets, by the Lake Park stream bed maintenance, pouring concrete and placing sto stones to create the waterfalls, and a yearly cleanup each spring, removing the garbage, the weeds, the undergrowth, and the rocks, and cadets volunteering with other groups bingos. Marksmanship is a very important aspect of our program. Not a week goes by that we are not in the range. This program helps us to compete in two different disciplines, marksmanship and biathlon. Over the years, we have hosted many zone and provincial competitions, bringing in teams from across Alberta and the Western Arctic, Yellowknife, Whitehorse, and Cambridge Bay. Our shooting range is a vital part of our cadet program, and without it, we would be hard-pressed to train our cadets regularly to represent our city and squadron. This year, five members of the marksmanship team achieved top position in our zone and will be competing at the provincial competition at CFB Edmonton in April, actually this weekend. 11 members of 42 competed at the zone biathlon competition and five members advanced to the provincial competition. The members of our squadron who competed at the provincial competition in biathlon and cameras this year were among the top teams in the competition. As an air cadet, all cadets need to learn survival slash first aid. Our training scenario revolves around what happens when an airplane goes down. 
Activities include an overnight survival weekend where cadets learn shelter building, fires, first aid, signals, snares, map and compass, and knots and lashings. The Duke of Edinburgh program has three components to it, physical fitness, community service, and expeditions. Because of their air cadets training, this allowed four cadets to receive their gold pin. One from Prince Edward and three others from the Duke of Edinburgh. Numerous, numerous other cadets received their silver pins from the Lieutenant Governor and the bronze pins were presented at the squadron. All of these activities are provided to our youth in Wetaskiwin free of charge with the understanding that the parents slash guardians will assist with the squadron fundraising activities. We spend approximately $12,000 a year just on renting the drill hall from September to June. The military provides the cadet uniforms free of charge with the understanding that they will be returned in good condition once the cadet finishes participating in the program. Our staff are provided by the Canadian Armed Forces. Our two uniform officers, who are both former cadets, came back to 40, help 42 specifically. We also have two civilian instructors who are both retired cadet officers who have a combined experience level of approximately 85 years. We have a volunteer instructor who is retired from the Navy. This program has impacted hundreds of youth in our community, giving them a sense of achievement and citizenship. As the parent organization, the nonprofit organization who provides the funding of number 42 at Tasquin, they have made the conscious decision to not charge any fees so that our program is available to anyone in the Wetaskiwin area without having to discriminate based on their family's ability to pay for programming. We recognize that Wetaskiwin is a unique, unique place and we want to provide any youth who are interested in cadets the free opportunity to learn, to grow, and to advance. We have recently had a cadet from our squadron attending the Mil Royal Military College in Kingston, Ontario where he is now completing a university program to become an officer. This cadet, like many others we see, comes from a very humble background that would never have been able to provide him with the chance to go to university. <coughs> Cadets provides that kind of opportunity for the youth in our community. We have many former cadets who have gone on to have distinguished careers, both military and civilian including the first female commander in Canada of an artillery regiment, Colonel Krista Bocart, a commander of a service battalion, Lieutenant Colonel uh, P. Parody, a member of the Judd Advocate General's Law Department of the Canadian Armed Forces, who was recently honoured by the Governor General for his contributions to Canada, and a senior vice president at Enbridge Pipelines. The list goes on and on. Countless young people who have gone through the cadet training here in Wetaskiwin have gone on to amazing careers in the forces, in medicine, law, education, engineering, etc. Every year we have cadets return to tell us they wouldn't be who they were or who they are if it wasn't for cadets. Approximately 25 years ago, our parents sponsoring committee fully funded the building of the annex that was added to the east side of the drill hall. The range was renovated to include underfloor heating. We added a boiler for heating the entire annex, several classrooms, more offices, and a much needed bathroom, as well as some storage space. This addition was done with the full approval of the city council at that time. As a nonprofit organization, we have invested well over $100,000 into this building. We use every single one of the classrooms, the range, and the offices each Thursday night as part of our regular training. Each level of cadets is taught as a group in a single classroom. We have some cadets who complete six or seven years in the program, and these cadets are trained and instructed on how to teach the younger cadets. The drill hall is used extensively for drill classes and for formal group gatherings at the beginning and end of each Thursday evening. Tuesday evenings is our sports and other fitness related activities in the drill hall. Without the use of our classrooms, range and offices, we would not be able to deliver the great program that we provide to the youth of Wetaskiwin. 
We feel that our program is vital to Atasquan's youth as it provides free opportunities for youth in our community to be engaged in. In positive, healthy activities and learning. We recognize the need for accessible youth development and leadership programming in Wetaskiwin and wish to be able to continue the many unique opportunities available with Air Cadets to our youth. We hope to be able to work together with, this, with the City of Wetaskiwin to help build a strong, vibrant and diverse community. One which enables our youth to become active, involved, responsible citizens. We ask that you strongly consider the impact of our organization on the quality of life in Wetaskiwin for our youth, reflect on the history we have outlined for you, and realize the long-lasting impact that cadets makes to Wetaskiwin. The skills we teach and the experiences we offer are second to none. We would like to extend the offer to the members of the council and the mayor to come and see what our facilities look like. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Go ahead. Um, I move that City Council accepts the presentation from the Wetaskiwin Air Cadets par Parent Sponsoring Committee dated April 8, 2024, delegation as information. Moved by Councillor Aberley. Um, I'd like to start with saying thank you to the cadets and the parents and everything that you have done always for this community. And I remember when we were setting up for Remembrance Day the first time we were able to be back in the drill hall. And after that thing that happened a few years ago. And I was, I was sitting there and I was watching, it was young men, but so there was no women at that time, but it was, I, I watched these young men practicing how they were gonna come up to the tomb. And they were going to stand right honoring the fallen soldier for that event and the the young gentleman that was teaching them and guiding them down that road i was so proud and i was so proud that you are a part of this com this community and that you are continuing to bring that to our youth because i do think that we forget what that base um, did for our community and what all the soldiers continue to do um, so thank you, and I would love to come and see some drilling on Thursday night, so that would be good. And my last comment is, nobody has come to see me about the flower fundraiser this year. Is it happening? You know where to find me, Suzanne. Thank you. <laughs> That's easy. Anything else? Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Sid, thank you for, for that, Sid. That was very well done. Sid, when, when you and the parents got together and fundraised to build that annex to the drill hall, it became city property once it was finished. Is that correct? That is correct. So, yes. it, is, so it is now a city building? Yes. Okay. And what do you think about the, <coughs> the quality of that building at this point in time? Uh, the building that we put in is, is, is good. The range has issues, and I, I have read the report, all right, and I, I look forward to some dialogue with the city in regards to that report, all right, and I know that the committee does as well, all right, and that's where I'd kind of like to leave it so that we can talk and discuss and, and come, my goal is to find a solution, a resolution to this situation, all right, I, I don't, I don't want to start throwing stones or anything, because that doesn't, uh, that doesn't help us, all right. That's my opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Anything further? How many cadets do you have this year? We have 35 right now. Um, we have been, this year's been a really good year for rebuilding. When we finished with COVID and it was, it was terrible, all right? Because we were online so much. We had 15 cadets. We now have 35. Uh, we've lost some, we've gained some, but we see us in a growth phase. And that's what we're looking forward to. Um, we have, years ago, our highest number was 90. How, how long ago would that have been? Well, that's a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> so pre-COVID, what would your registration, how many cadets would you have had? We would, we would be in that 40 to 43, 45 range. That would be our normal number. 
but it depends on depends on the year right uh, and to be quite honest uh, we know that as the economy uh, is not as good people tend to come to cadets because we are free all right and we do work our our butts off to create a program that is interesting to keep those kids so they stay for those six and seven years so they have that they learn new things like the one thing is um, how to iron clothes <coughs> I'm sure that there are people who think that everybody has an ironing board in their house that is not the case we have cadets come to the squadron and that's where they iron their uniform that's what we provide we teach my wife teaches them how to sew badging on so they know how to sew those are all things that, that we provide, hands-on stuff for the, for, the, for the cadets, all right? I've had the opportunity to be a part of the award ceremony and then got to tour around the different stations of the work that they've been doing. So I, I think it's fantastic and I'm, I wish more people knew the work and the experience the kids have coming out of that program. And I was one of those that didn't understand or know what they were doing. And getting that opportunity to come and see it firsthand was pretty impressive. Councilor Bronco. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Being a reservist in the Highland Fusiliers uh, and in the regular forces, one thing about what you guys do, you build future citizens. Because what we learned, what I've learned, it's a life learning experience. You never forget. The friendship, the support, I learned how to do my bed, so I still do it today. The wife's not here, so <laughs> the 45. So it's a team that we need today in this world, building young future leaders. And I praise you and I thank you very much for what you do for this community. Thank you. Councilor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Sid. Sid, how many years have you been doing this? And don't be, don't be shy, because I know uh, you've been doing it a long time. I, I joined the squadron in 1970 as a cadet. But you've been leading them for how long? Um, I, I am a retired officer. Um, there's a compulsory retirement age in, the, in oh. ours. So at 65, I turned my uniform in after 43 years in the military. <laughs> and I'm still working with the squadron as a civilian. So if you include it all, I guess I've been here not quite 54 years. Right? And so no, and I, I wanted to recognize that, and and you've been, you've been very dedicated, and I know that, and and I think you were being a little bit humble when you were talking about uh, what the cadets have done. You've won national awards in drilling, in biathlon, in marksmanship, uh, in public speaking, and then your cadets get to go to Vernon as well, do they not? Um, Some of them. Yeah, camps have changed a lot in the last oh, okay. little while. Um, we hopefully will have some cadets going to Vernon and to uh, Cold Lake. It depends on the type of course they're going for. So they get the experience uh, related to flying as well. Uh, they will, but uh, we at this this year we did not have any we did not have anybody successful to get the flying scholarship. Okay. But again, thank you, Sid. I, your dedication is is beyond words. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. Item 9.2, Co-op Place Rec Hall Structural Report. Good morning. The Co-op Place uh, Rec Hall Structural Report uh, initiated from the 2018 as, uh, AE Facilities Assessment Report. And in that uh, report, they had estimated costs in 2019 dollars of $87,000 to fix the structural issues um, on the uh, Rec Hall. In late 2023, an engineering firm was uh, tasked by administration to inspect the wall and provide an updated report. The new report shows much more accelerated degradation of the wall as shown in this report. The new report recommended cutting out the bad sections and replacing them. Administration 
then contacted a specialized concrete company to get a budget estimate for the work that might be required. Re-roofing the structure has been estimated by a competent roofing consultant company to be approximately $80,000. This would have to be completed no matter what option we look at of patching or repairing the wall. The new estimate to repair the wall with cutting out the old sections and replacing the roof is uh, estimated to be $370,000. One of the alternatives to repairing this facility is to investigate the cost of demolishing this portion of the structure. We have an estimate of $75,000 for complete demolition. Perhaps if we just went forward and patched the sections of the wall that required it, including the large cracks, and clad the wall and redid the roof, the estimate comes in at $167,000 plus uh, any patching that would be needed. This report is to provide counsel on the information of the current condition of that facility. We're making no recommendation, but just stating what the condition is at this time. Any questions? Good. For a motion to accept his information. Councillor Blatz. Any discussion? Councillor Bronco. Thank you, uh, Tyler, uh, to the chair there. Um, so, 176 to repair the, the what we have there, and 70,000. Okay, what I'm trying to get is these repairs. How long would they last? Us? Are you coming back five, six years from now? Because we're tying into something old. Are we going to spend another 150 thousand dollars to repair the old stuff? Because the new stuff stands up, but the old stuff. So. Have you have a cost to rebuild or reconstruct this structure, the walls? Uh, through the Charity Council, we did not get an estimate of the cost. This facility, as was just um, presented to us, is used for a very uh, specific pur purpose as a shooting range. The current wall on that facility is uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 inches thick. Um, and then there is a concrete roof as well. And then of course the concrete floor. So uh, we're not sure how, if we were to rebuild it out to what, to what uh, would need to be done to rebuild it. Like would we have to go to that extreme or could we build it uh, at something less than that? So my last question would be, if we were to repair this building, what would be the life expectancy of the building and what we have there? Because uh, it's, it seems kind of, if we're going to spend 200000 let's say a quarter million dollars to repair it, and five, six years down the road, we've got to spend another, some more money. So any idea how long this construction would hold up? For right. future, through the chair to council, the current structure, as as we heard, was built in the early nineteen mid nineteen forties. So we know it is eighty years plus, and the degradation is mostly happening where there is exposure. So when the sections, this is a poured in place facility. Back then, they used kind of like tar paper to between the two sections. And that allowed water to get in there, and wherever these joints are, that's where the worst degradation is. And then the roof is concrete, and there's an overhang on the roof over top of the wall, and that's deteriorating as well. So then that allows more deterioration to come down the wall. So if the current structure had a new roof and it protected the overhang, it would last, the roof section should last. 40 years. The wall, if it was patched with rebar, good concrete, and then perhaps cladded at the least expensive, it should last another 80 years. I mean, it, it depends on how much weathering we'll get at the wall. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor Gandam. I think this is going to go through the chair to Paul, and I might not be able to, I'm sorry, but I literally just thought of this. Where do our RCMP practice their shooting? Do you know? Uh, through the mayor and Councillor uh, Aberle, I, I am aware that at the detachment they have a uh, whole facility or like a room specifically around um, something to do with guns, but I can't tell you any more like if, whether or not there's a target shooting practice range in there. I do understand as well at K Division downtown, they have a whole target range there. So my understanding is most RCMP practices out of there. And within our own facility, I know we have a, a room to do with yeah. guns and target shooting. I don't know that it's actually firearms are discharging out of there. I would doubt that. But um, there's something that they do with firearms here as well. Okay. Thank you. It was just something in my head to think about. Thank you. Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Councillor Aberley. When I asked this question a few years ago, they said they went to Leduc for recertification. I don't know about practicing, but for recertification, they were going to Leduc. Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, as a follow up, and, and a follow up to this report and, and to what Sid brought to us, I don't know if this is the right place, but can we get something set up where we can do a tour of, of that whole facility? Yep. That doesn't have to be a motion, though. That's just administrative. There was an email that went out asking if anybody wanted to go on a tour. Yes, I know, but it didn't, didn't seem like anybody signed up. So, okay, thank you. Nine point three request request for review bylaw nineteen seventy dash two zero development tax incentive bylaw. <laughs> Good morning, Council. Good morning. I'd first like to start with an apology because I had brought some of this information forward about four weeks ago to Council and was not fully prepared. And had I been prepared at that time, I may not have to be here today. <laughs> we have seen uh, uh, a very uh, encouraging level of investment interest in Wetaskiwin, both from current businesses that are looking to expand as well as domestic and international investors that are eager to be in Wetaskiwin because they're very excited about the possibilities that exist here. So we do have a current uh, development bylaw uh, that uh, was initially developed to encourage industrial development. Uh, a few years ago that amendment or that bylaw was amended to also include significant commercial development above a threshold of uh, two million dollars. So uh, my intention to come to council today is just to make sure that we're all fully aware of the bylaw and uh, to allow us to move as efficiently as possible when we receive commercial interest uh, in the city uh, to not uh, belabor administrative processes and, and delay timelines uh, to ensure that we can capitalize on their enthusiasm and land those investments. Good. To accept Councillor Blatt's, accept his information. Yep. Comments, questions, discussion? Councillor Elliott. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just was wondering, Vern, do we have any incentives to build residential properties? Uh, not at this time. And uh, I believe that uh, what, what you'll find is uh, in a market where industrial uh, development begins, um, residential will follow. Uh, and we're seeing, you know, currently uh, a lot of commercial activity. Uh, and you, you don't need to look very hard to find it. Uh, so the commercial activity is happening, and we are seeing uh, interest, uh, you know, as presented earlier today uh, by planning and development, interest in residential development as well. And we're going to continue to see that. Um, I don't think that a residential incentive is required at this time. Okay, thank you. And just follow up. When you gave your report at the chamber meeting, you said there were 62 new businesses in Wetaskiwin in 2023, is that correct? 40 new businesses. 40 new businesses. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything further? Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried, thank you. <coughs> 9.4. 
9.4 City Portal for Residents Virtual City Hall. Good morning, Council. At the March 11th regular meeting of Council, Council requested that administration bring back information regarding the cost requirements and timeline for the implementation of a city portal for residents. The city currently has a product referred to as Virtual City Hall. This product was purchased as part of the Central Square suite of products, which we use for our financial software right now in the organization. We are currently in discussions with Central Square to investigate the cost timeline and resource requirements for the implementation of Virtual City Hall. Following the preparation of this agenda, we did hear back from Central Square <coughs> that their cost was $15,075 for the implementation, which will be charged as incurred. This, no, however, does not consider the resource requirements on the finance and IT side. Administration would like to request additional time to research other products that may be available on the market, and therefore defer this, defer this request to the 2025 budget deliberations, at which time a business case would be presented for council's review. Thank you. Thank you. Looking for a motion to accept this information. Councillor Aberly. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gandam. I move that City Hall, or sorry, that City Council accepts the details provided on Virtual City Hall as information. Moved by Councillor Aberly. Any discussion? Councillor Blatz. Thank you. Uh, through the Chair to Administration, um, I just noticed in the report there was a portion that said um, Administration would like to request additional time to research other products that may be available on the market. Um, would this mean something separate to Virtual City Hall or something in addition to Virtual City Hall? Through the Chair to, to Councillor Blatz, um, we would like to see if there are other options. Even though we do have the software, we do want to see what else is out there that we can bring back during budget deliberations. Um, Virtual City Hall may not be the best anymore, even though we do have it. Um, so we would like a chance to compare that and bring back that back during budget. Okay, Thank perfect. You. Thank you very much. Further, are we ready for the question? Those in favor? Carried. Nine five, Emergency Advisory Committee document review. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, we figured because we had all of Council here and all of Council is the Emergency Advisory Committee that we would give you an update on our latest uh, meetings with the Alberta Emergency Management Agency. So we've met with them a couple of, well, each year we meet with them annually. And um, the last time we met with them where they saw um, issues that they wanted us to correct was in November 30th, uh, 2022. We did recently meet with them on March 13th and nothing had changed. There were five items noted. Uh, two of them have been completed and the other three are um, our training, our annual exercise and uh, planned activity. So those are all planned for 2024. Uh, and they did not see any other issues with um, with our bylaw or processes, so we are just bringing this back as information. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Councillor Elliott. I would move that the Emergency Advisory Committee receives this report as information. Moved by Councillor Elliott. Any discussion? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. 10.1, Outdoor Spray Park Project Update. Good morning, Mayor and City Council. We are here this morning to provide an update on the progress of the Outdoor Spray Park project. The Spray Park Committee is requesting that Council allow the use of city-owned land located next to the future Spray Park for an accessible playground in addition to the Spray Park, and the addition of the accessible playground would be the first of its kind in the community and would provide a space for all to enjoy. The Spray Park Committee will be funding the capital cost of both of these projects. And once the project is complete, the ongoing operating costs of the assets would be the responsibility of the city. The estimated additional operating cost would be approximately $26,000 per year. 
over the life cycle. The Recreation Department has received approval from finance to also manage and oversee the donation campaign of the Spray Park Committee. Therefore, we'll be, receiving, we'll be able to receive donations at Manlock Centre as well as online, which will help facilitate the ongoing fundraising for the committee. I'm going to turn over now to Chelsea and Katrina uh, to present the rest of their update. Welcome. Good morning, Mayor, Council, and City staff. Um, we are just coming back today to provide an update on progress that we've made on the project since our last delegation. Um, if we are talking about some of the things that we've done since then, so many of you are aware because you attended, but we had our roundtable events back through um, January and February. So we had three separate events that we held um, at the WRPS uh, central building. Um, and we invited different service groups, business owners, uh, general public, potential uh, sponsors, and other stakeholders with vested interests. Uh, we were able to garner feedback and offer information on the project status, and we had a lot of it excitement and positive feedback. We made notes on um, suggestions made by people that attended. Um, we were able to host that group, which was a total of about 60 people. We also attended the Parade of Programs. We had our committee set up a booth at the Parade of Programs to engage with general public at large. Uh, same goals as above. There was about 200 people in attendance that evening and engagement uh, was estimated to be about half of attendees that wanted to discuss the project and inquire further. We've also made further social media and marketing efforts to be able to engage online. Um, we have been working on creating a web page for What If Wetaskiwin. That has been completed and will be going live this week. And we've also been able to complete our um, financing <coughs> With, uh, as mentioned, with the Manlet Center, they're going to be able to uh, sponsor, I guess, or set up our um, online contributions, which will be uh, a benefit. Update on fundraising. Um, we have had some complications. So at the first um, delegation that we came into, we had discussed that we would be taking over the Memorial Fund and that that would allow us to be able to fundraise underneath of that. Um, unfortunately, the fund... Uh, has been completely disbanded as far as it being a nonprofit. So we've had to look for um, a secondary partnership, and that has been made with the Heritage Museum. And so we've been able to work under that umbrella to make our grant application. So we do have two partners. We've got a partner with the city and then with the Heritage Museum as well. Um, that's been happening since late December, so we are a little bit behind probably where we would like to be with our fundraising, but we've been able to make quick quick progress as well. So we've made multiple grant applications um, as far as sponsorship and donations. So <clears throat> we have been a little bit stalled here as well just because we don't even have our banking quite through with the Heritage Foundation yet, so we haven't been able to accept donations um, through any forum, but we hope to have that up and running in the next two weeks uh, with a connected bank account. Um, moving on to our fundraising updates. Uh, Natasha, just an update here. She has been able to complete that online contribution option. That will be going live this week. And we have had several businesses and groups offer to run fundraisers for the project, which has been very positive. So you might have seen um, things in um, on the gymnastics club. They've been running a fundraiser for us, Chips, Wetaskiwin Connects, um, and we are partnering with the Raceway as well. <clears throat> so lots of positive strides there. Um, and we have had one grant approval come through, which was very quick turnaround, which was through the Credit Union Bank. As mentioned, our primary objective has stayed the same um, it will be to provide a spray park for the community. Um, we have had some feedback from community though, and so that's why we've added the secondary objective. I know we've always kind of said that we'd like to see a park or playground connected with this project. Um, as we did a little bit more research, we actually don't have a single barrier-free playground in all of Wetaskiwin. So there's not a pour-in-place barrier-free playground here in our city, which is quite unfortunate, even at our uh, early learning center. 
they don't have barrier-free accessibility um, parks. So we really wanted to put the focus on that for this project. Um, as we've moved forward and gotten some feedback from affected communities, we've taken that feedback and put it into an overall vision of what we'd like to see. And I think first and foremost, we just want to make sure that we're looking at the project as a broad scope and that we're making plans with an overall vision in place. If our fundraising doesn't come through for the complete project, our, our primary objective will be the spray park, um, but we would like to kind of see an overall vision for the project and get feedback on an overall um, project. So uh, just some of this information is a little bit redundant. I know we've touched base on it. We have still settled on that same location uh, west of the Manlock Pool. Um, we have made some notations of things to consider as far as complications um, as well as benefits and we definitely feel like the pros outweigh the cons for this location um, with its centralized area proximity to service and the ability to have security and visibility to the Manluck pool. Um, also its accessibility to the washrooms as well as um, the infrastructure there as well. So it is a, an ideal spot for the project. Um, moving down to our next slide, I wanted to take a look at kind of a projected overview of what this would look like. So our splash pad there, yes, I saw it. Our splash pad there on the right, and then the playground would be there on the left. Um, the idea would be to have this fenced um, with wheelchair accessibility, so we'd make sure we've got concrete um, pathways going through and around. Um, and then potential for a washroom, gazebos, uh, benches, all the, the accessories that you'd have with a, a playground and park. And then scrolling down to our next slide, wanted to provide a little bit of overview. We have talked about the company that we would be using, um, which is still has maintained uh, with PlayQuest. Kelly Samborski is our project consultant. Um, and then we wanted to provide some pictures on the project as well, just to give you guys an overview of how things are looking and, and the idea of what we would be putting forward. So um, we can just <coughs> scroll through some of these, give you guys an idea of what the project would look like. So we have kind of added some elements unique to a task when you see that we've got the possibility of having the water tower, which is unique to us. Um, borrowing some features from our neighbors to the south and looking at having some teepees or elements there that that tie in. Um, and then we've looked at the design elements of how to feature this as what, as like a, a low flow toddler area, our family centric area, and then our high flow area so that it's for children and families of all ages. Um, we have made, um, made decisions here to be able to incorporate children with disabilities as well. So high sensory, uh, wheelchair accessible through, through the features as well. Um, and then scrolling down a little further, uh, just confirming that we are still going to be trying to achieve the recirculating system, which is that closed circuit system we've discussed prior. It allows for there to be a warmer water that we would be using, but it also is um, a greener option as it recirculates the water. It is a higher capital cost, but it is a lower, um, a lower cost to run each summer, which would be a benefit for, for the city as well. And it would be able to be run if we are on water restrictions through the summer. Playground design that we have looked at, uh, as we discussed, this would be um, fully accessible. So we have a lot of features here. Um, there's a, a brand new slide design actually on one of these parks that is um, primarily features, uh, it's sorry, presented for kids that are in a wheelchair. They're able to use the slide and, and crawl around and, and climb back up. So it's a, a barrier-free slide. It's a brand new feature that they've been doing. Um, and then there's multiple different sensory issue, uh, sensory features as well on this. And, and obviously our pour in place would be the most important piece of that. Um, scrolling down, a few more pictures to kind of take a look at. And just to remember, these are preliminary designs, so we are still taking feedback on them. We're able to scale back. We are able to make changes. 
Um, for those of you at the round table, I did discuss this a little bit as well. Our consultation with some of our marginalized communities, we did get some feedback that people would like to see some um, accessibility pieces and possibly some fitness equipment. So we've added that to the overall quote and put it into the design, but we're able to make some changes to that as well. But um, all of these things would fit within the parameters of the land and the scope of the project we originally had talked about. Um, overall vision for the project, I think we've had an immense amount of excitement come back from community. Um, we've seen that there's huge potential for this to be a centralized hub for recreation. I think that looking at having the man look there, the high school, we've got our skating rinks, we've got a lot of features here, even having City Hall close, it's just a very beautiful area and I think a very centralized hub, um, really good walkability for the area as well. So. Um, we've gotten really good feedback. These are some of the, the things that people have said what they would like to see eventually down the road in this area. And so we've just kind of made notes of some of the things um, that people kind of had had excitement about. Um, overall, I think that having the community feedback has been very positive. We've had good strides um, with our, our fundraising and we're excited to see the project go forward. So we open it up for questions or comments. Councilor Blatz. I move that City Council approves the addition of the accessible playground to the scope of the Spray Park project. And I moved have by a Councilor question. Blatz, go ahead. Okay, through the chair to the Spray Park Committee. Um, I will always sing your guys' praises because you do such an incredible job and even your presentations and everything, like it's just so well done. And so you guys are doing incredible work. Um, my question is more for the people who are listening in and they hear you say barrier-free playground. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to describe that and why it's important to you that we have one? Absolutely. So most of the parks in the city have surfacing, which would be pebbles or chips or sand. And so that is not a barrier-free um, playground. That means people in wheelchairs have to be carried through. They can't, that can't roll up to certain features. Um, there is one swing at our corner park up by Parkview that is meant for um, a, a child that needs to kind of sit and be strapped in. And I think that's the only feature in Wetaskiwin that we currently have that is meant for a, a disability, um, disabilities, I guess, children with disabilities. So we don't have any other features that allow for children who have limited mobility to be able to go into a park and be able to use that without having um, people that have to carry them. So I know at the early learning center, they have the aides will sometimes <coughs> carry them over to a certain feature and they can play in one small area. Um, so that's kind of primarily what we're looking at. So if you look at the playground design, there are wide um, ramps that you can go up on the park they can wheel themselves onto certain features. There are sensory play on the sides of the ramp so that there's things for them to do all the way up. And then having that pour in place surfacing is probably the most important so they can access easily all areas of the park. Um, we've made several decisions on that um, for pieces that we've pulled in that are primarily based on focusing on those, those pieces that we would need for children with limited mobility. Perfect. Thank you very much, and thank you for everything you guys do. Mm -hmm. Councillor, I'm oh, sorry, I've got Councillor Bronco first, and then Councillor Elliott. Thank you, uh, Chair, to the young ladies. Um, you kept saying washrooms. Is the washrooms outside, or are you going to use the swim and pool washrooms? Yes, I can address that. So I think our primary um, delegation, we had said we can use the washrooms inside the Manluck Center if possible, if our funding doesn't quite get there. We have had several quotes come back for exterior washrooms, which I think would be a huge benefit to the baseball, the football programs, the soccer programs, people that use the tennis courts, the playgrounds, um, the skate park. And so we do have some tentative quotes and the option to put features in outside um, for an exterior washroom. If that doesn't fall through, I think um, every summer they do put uh, the porta potties out in those areas, anyways. And so we would look at possibility of having those in that area until we are able to put in a, a more permanent feature. And my other question is: you have the uh, access to everybody handicapped. Yes. 
are you using concrete asphalt or rubber mats because concrete uh, my opinion is the hardest when you fall down because we have handicapped people are you talking about on the playground yes yes so playground um, ahs regulations you can't have concrete underneath a playground so obviously concrete would go in first and then a pour in place rubber surfacing would be used underneath the playground so so be a rubber mat because you can't use chips not, ch have not chips yeah it yeah, would okay. be a pour in place rubber surfacing yes thank you Councillor elliott Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through the ladies. Thank you for your presentation, and I'll reiterate again, I, you are so well organized. It's very impressive what you're doing, so thank you for doing that. Uh, on the one picture with the, with the uh, fitness equipment, are you planning on covering it? Is that meant to be? Um, so you'll see in one of the pictures there is a gazebo option. So we have priced it out that we have the availability to put a gazebo over it so people would be able to use it, um, for instance, if it was raining. Yes. Um, that is a possibility, and it will come down to what we fundraise and, and prioritize okay. for, for spending, yes. Okay. I, I did consult with the company that does those, and yes. I can share my information with you. That would be wonderful. On that. Um, are paths going to be required then to, to get to the playground and the spray park? Like if we're going to have handicapped people coming in wheelchairs or, or electric wheelchairs or those kinds of things, walkers. So that will be part of the plan eventually will be to put paths in as well. Um, yeah, I think that's a central part of the plan. So if you look at that overall vision that we have, um, if you scroll back, there's a topographical view of the, the plan in place. So we would be coming basically from the sidewalks and that path would go all the way down to the sidewalk that connects by the baseball at the at the opposite end. Okay. Um, and yes, that would be a, a primary <coughs> feature is, is that we want to make sure that it is wheelchair accessible mm -hmm. and accessible for people with mobility issues. Okay. And I have to agree with you about the washrooms. There's so many people there in the summertime, mm -hmm. um, even people just going picnicking or, or walking the trails to have washrooms outside makes so much sense. And probably if we have permanent washrooms, they won't get pushed over or lit on fire. So probably be a really good idea. <laughs> but ag again, thank you for your presentation. Very well done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Bronco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one more question yet. You said here you might uh, use the facility for hockey, basketball. Is that a new concrete pad you're putting in or are you removing? Are these, because uh, it's winter time, do you remove your playground uh, equipment out and use that or just? Yeah, so similarly with any other park in the city, the playground will stay um, year round. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the features of the splash park themselves can be taken down and stored for the winter. It allows for um, a longer lifespan. And so that will be, that's already folded into the cost of maintenance on the, on the spray park is that, that that would come down the majority of the features and get stored. Um, and then the beginning, you were asking something about the hockey. I'm not sure I understood. Yeah, if you could reiterate. So I got some information here. We could use that for basketball, hockey. Oh, I think you were looking at potential ideas for other areas in okay. that rec center. And somebody had mentioned if we had um, <clears throat> concreted the base of the of the hockey rink there, then it could be used for <coughs> basketball or sports in the in the summer months. So that's probably. Um, a sideline project and not I'm not on on board right now thank you Go ahead. <laughs> uh, thank you Mayor Gandam through the chair to the spray park committee and I've said it every time but I'm going to say it every time you come forward thank you um, you show what power this community actually has when they want to see something and they will come forward with the solution and the ability to really bring excitement to this community and the fundraising efforts and the work you've done for the grants and everything. I just, I really do admire you and you make me very proud to be a member of your community. So thank you. Anything else? Great job as always. Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried, thank you. Thank you. 10.2, disposal of properties acquired through tax forfeiture.
Hello again, Council. On October 27th of 2022, the city held a property tax public auction offering 16 properties for sale that were on the tax arrears list. None of these properties were sold at the auction. Council subsequently directed administration to register tax forfeiture endorsements against title for these properties. Administration confirms that tax forfeiture instruments were registered against 14 of the 16 properties that were offered for sale. This is because one owner entered into a tax agreement with the city, one was paid in full, and since then another property was fully paid for and the revival of title process is in process, is in place for that property. The remaining roles, which I will read out, role number 310250, 110150, 1300850, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150, 1610150,
do you say is that from now that we maintain it in the state that it's it? So grass cutting, snow removal, and items of that nature. But if it has a broken glass right now, it is not the city's duty to repair the broken glass. Okay. And lastly, do we have insurance on those places until they're sold? Through the chair to Councilor Elliott, there is insurance of the, on the properties right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything further? Ready for the question? Those in favor? Carried. I'm a I think it's the eclipse, I apologize. <clears throat> I move that City Council directs administration to complete the sale of the listed properties once the appraised values are determined through a local realtor. Moved by Councillor Aberley. Any discussion? Tulu, before we'd gotten into looking after properties that were in arrears of property taxes, can you tell us how much the city was owed in property taxes, and then what we're sitting at now in terms of <coughs> property taxes owed? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, our property taxes, be, did you mean the question, right? In terms of the penalties, right? As of December 2020, um, based on financial statements, our property taxes receivable was 2,380,921. As of December 2023, our property taxes receivable is 2,341,282. Thank you. So down just about $40,000. And that includes the penalties as well that are owed or is that just strictly taxes over? To the mayor, that is taxes and penalties. Taxes and penalties. Thank you. Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Item 10.3, public engagement initiative with Connect with Tasquin. Welcome. Welcome back. the last one for today. <laughs> Good morning, Mayor and members of City Council. In February, administration was directed to reach out to connect with Tasquin and explore at least three public engagement opportunities for 2024. I am here today to present you with an update on the progress of the public engagement planning so far. Over the last month, administration has been working very closely with Connect with Tasquin and has agreed that the desired outcomes of this public engagement effort are to bring people together, build trust between municipal government and residents, as well as among neighbours in the community. In addition, through the process and the engagement efforts, administration and connect with Tasquin anticipate that information will be shared that will support both the community development efforts of connect with Tasquin and provide valuable insight to the city as we continue to implement various corporate strategies. This collaboration will be able to maximise the input and and impact on community and well as well as determine where we may need to go and how we may need to pivot both in current and future planning. Public engagement is a critical tool that both the municipality and community organizations have at their fingertips. It requires all those involved demonstrate a commitment to the process, a plan that is transparent, and once the results and solutions are created, that agreements are kept. It is about getting to know the whole community, their aspirations and their strengths. With this in mind, Connect with Tasquin and administration have been working on the following agreements. That community lead the conversations, that there is a desire to make the community stronger and more connected, to identify and leverage the assets within the community. Collaboration, co-creation to build a partnership and a plan, and to use creative approaches and best practices for the public engagement efforts. Connect with Tasquin and administration are in the final pl planning stages to develop a holistic and fulsome public engagement plan. And this plan is grounded on the International Association of Public Participation core values. 
so that those who are impacted by these decisions are actively involved in the process. They provide input to the design of the process, involvement is culturally appropriate, and there is a commitment to the community that they will be able to influence those decisions. Participants have the information they need to participate in a meaningful way, and participants will also know how their input has affected the decision. Once the plan is finalized, it'll be brought back to Council for approval, as a financial commitment from the City will be required. And this will wrap up Phase 1, or Engagement Number 1. The target date for the series of the broader public engagement events is targeted for early June, and Connect with Tasquin has an invitation to City Council to be actively engaged in those events as your pr presence, perspectives, and knowledge are needed both as a member of Council and more importantly as residents of Wetaskiwin. One of the Connect Wetaskiwin members said recently during one of our meetings that we are doing this differently. Where the drivers are coming from the community and Council where we can meet in the middle and create meaningful solutions that we've uncovered together. The final engagement, phase three, will be bringing the stakeholders back to confirm that we, what we have heard, how they can be involved, and what they can expect for next steps. I'm happy to answer any questions. Councillor Aberley. Thank you. Um, I move that City Council directs administration to liaise with Connect with Tasquin in creating a comprehensive public engagement plan and bring the final plan to Council by the end of Q2 2024. Moved by Councillor Aberley. Any questions, comments, discussion? Go ahead. Thank you. I have a long dialogue. Um, I don't think I need to say that when I brought this forward in the beginning, it's about being able to get our community to start to shift some focuses and start to do these other things that are important for our community. We've had two examples already this morning, the parents um, with the cadets and the Spray Park Committee showing what the power of community is. When these community, community groups get together and do something for a community as a whole, I truly believe that we, that's council and administration, is not the answer to these problems. Our, um, our community is that solution. And the community is going to need to want to change. What Welcome Wetaskiwin, or not Welcome Wetaskiwin, what Connect Wetaskiwin has been doing since the pandemic, because that's when it started, is exactly this, wanting change in this community and doing the steps behind. They've taken training, they've gone to the Tamarack Institute. They continue to have programs that are really trying to lead this change and lead our community. They're begging us. Um, they're actually begging us. This is the second time I have heard Connect with Tasquin say, let us help you. Let us help you do this. And I really believe that we are on a road right now that will be the only way that this change we all want, all seven of us will want, will last. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Connect with Tasquin for, for their enthusiasm and their spirit. They are, it's nice to have organizations that are working to show the positive side of Wetaskiwin, um, and I hope that it will continue. I just was wondering, is it is there any potential for FCSS funding for Connect with Tasquin? And I don't know if you can answer that or not, but I did send that question in. Through the chair to Councillor Elliott, at this time, Connect with Tasquin is still working on their charitable status. So until that time, they're not eligible for very a lot of grants or okay. funding available. So we're still they're still working on it, and I'm here to support them. Okay, and, and it's all it's all volunteers. So absolutely. As the two previous presenters were all volunteers as well. So I just appreciate, Mr. Mayor, that we have so many wonderful people working for positive things to happen in Wetaskiwin. Thank you. Anything further? And I'd like to echo those remarks too. I appreciate all the work that's going into this. We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. We're going to take a 13 minute break.
24 tax recovery reserve bid. Hello again, Council. Annually, Council must approve reserve bids and conditions for tax recovery sale for properties that were listed on the arrears list. Administration has provided a listing of properties with tax arrears to be offered for sale and the recommended reserve bid for each property. The recommended reserve bid is based on the current assessed value of the properties. I will now read out the rules. We've had two properties drop off since this agenda was prepared and we've had to add four more properties. The, the affected rules are as follows. 120040 with a reserve bid of 112,300. 120060 reserve bid 77,300. 181260 Reserve bid, 166,700. Rule number 300820, with a reserve bid of, seven, 820 with a reserve bid of 214,600. Rule 120170, with a reserve bid of 77,500. Rule 182230, with a reserve bid of 190,400. Rule 210250, with a reserve bid of 43,900. Roll 303230 with a reserve bid of 64,500. Roll 303380 with a reserve bid of 32,800. Roll 303470 with a reserve bid of 27,200. And roll 303480 with a reserve bid of 25,200. All property owners can still enter into a payment arrears agreement with the city and we will continue to speak um, to these property owners until the auction is held. Um, I also want to note that we do have to, we have advertising requirements, hence why we come to council even while we're still speaking um, to the property owners. We have days and timing requirements under the MGA when we have to advertise these properties in the Gazette and the local newspaper. However, there's still opportunities to pay for these properties up until, the, to pay the arrears in full up until the day of the auction. The conditions of sale are as follows. 10% of the non-refundable down payment must be paid by cash, bank draft, or certified payment on the auction date. Full payment is to be made within 30 days following the auction date by bank draft or certified check. Each parcel will be offered for sale, subject to a reserve bid and to the reservations and conditions contained in the exist existing certificate of, of title. The land is being offered for sale on an as is where is basis, and the city of Wetaskiwin makes no representation and gives no warranty whatsoever as to the adequacy of services, soil conditions, land use districting, building and development conditions, absence or presence of environmental contamination, or the developability of the subject land for any intended use by the purchaser. The purchaser is responsible for obtaining vacant possession. The advert that is included in the agenda is exactly as it will appear in the, in the Gazette once the roll numbers have been updated, as well as in the local newspaper. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Aberley. Thank you, Mayor Gandam. I move that City Council approves the 2024 tax recovery sale reserve bid terms and conditions of sale. Moved by Councillor Aberley. Any discussion? Just for clarification, members of Council cannot put a bid in for these, right? Through the Chair to Council, no, members of Council cannot put a bid in themselves. Only because I read on social media one time, so it must have been true that the reason that council puts these properties up for sale is so that they can bid on them. So just making sure that we can't and that's not part of the reason or the process. Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. 12.1 bylaw 2059-24 to amend land use bylaw 1804-14 to redistrict a portion of northeast-13-46-24-4.
Good morning. Now you are. Now it's on, okay. Every time. Uh, planning and Development received an application to rezone a 1.38 hectare portion of Northeast 1346244 from UR Urban Reserve to R4 High Density Residential to facilitate the development of a multi unit residential building following the anticipated subdivision of the rezoned portion. The subject land is located on 56th Avenue and the future south extension of 40th Street. The transportation master plan identifies 56th Avenue as a primary corridor. Adjacent developed land uses are low density residential to the north and west of the site and is urban reserve to the east and south. Uh, the subject land includes the northern portion of a wetland. The applicant has received provincial approval for development and construction work that will impact this wetland including the incorporation of a portion of it into the stormwater management facilities and open space that will serve the future neighborhood. The land is subject to the East Residential Area Structure Plan, which identifies the subject land as one of two multi-unit residential sites planned at the north entrance to the neighborhood. The purpose of the R4 High Density Residential District is to allow for maximum density residential development. It allows for a variety of higher density multi-unit housing types up to apartment buildings, low rise apartment buildings. Um, the proposed rezoning therefore supports implementation of the East Wetaskiwin Residential Area Structure Plan uh, and administration uh, recommends approving this rezoning. Thank you. Councillor Aberley. I move that City Council give second reading to bylaw 2059-24 to amend land use bylaw 1804-14 to redistrict a portion of NE-13-46-24-4 from UR Urban Reserve to R4 High Density Residential. Um, I have one question, I think. When we looked at the plan, and I'm not sure if it's included here, and it, it's going to the questions that came up, came up this morning with the wetlands and the ecosystem and um, the dry storm ponds, if we could, it's not on there, but we're looking at a plan that includes the dry storm ponds. Would that be part of this ecological, like looking after the wetlands or being, does that incorporate the wetlands at all? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Aberley. Um, so I believe the plan that you're looking at that was attached to the report comes from the um, ASP. So that shows the long-term plan and does show it as dry storm ponds. And it's the one on the west side, which would incorporate part of the, uh, the existing wetland. And in general, and I'm just, I'm thinking back to my knowledge of Wetaskiwin, most of, at least on that side of the train tracks, is largely what could be at any time marshlands. So are these, do you know, are these more marshy than the other marshes? Like I think back to all the photos I've seen of the flooding of that area and most of what we've built past City Hall here, but even including City Hall, at one, at one time would easily flood over. Uh, so through the chair to Councillor Aberley, so I believe at the time that the ASP was um, prepared, that wetland was not wet year-round, um, but that was 2007, I think. And so now, yes, this wetland is typically wet all year-round, so when it comes time to like build this out um, in the development and further subdivision, we'd want to look at um, the design of that storm management pond and it wouldn't necessarily be a dry storm pond. We'd have to look at the SP in more detail to see if that needs an amendment or not, um, but the design would be dictated by the actual circumstances. And the... If that helps. That's, it does, and that's determined by Alberta Environment in conjunction with Alberta Environment, or are we just throwing that out the window? Does that make sense? Um, what I'm trying to yeah. ask is, and maybe Sue knows what I'm trying to ask, but what I'm trying to ask is, and I, I appreciate the comments about um, our wetlands and our eco ecosystems being irreplaceable. And as human activity continues to do what human activity does, I believe we must have a responsibility to take that into 
consideration as we construct over things such as wetlands. And we are guided by not the city's planning, but the province's planning for ecosystems. I can help add a little bit to this. So through the chair to Councillor um, Aberly, all water in the province is controlled by it by the province. Yeah. And so um, we could not, we could go better than what they require, but obviously not let it go worse. This is not a significant wetland in Alberta environments um, understanding of what's happening here. And quite often, uh, Kathy and I have looked back through uh, the aerial photos, it's dry, it's wet, it's dry, it's wet. Um, so it doesn't, it, it doesn't meet the classification for protection under the province's uh, requirements. Now, they're still including it, and even though the ASP says dry pond, it's likely going to be a wetland. Um, and as was noted with um, Elizabeth, we, we would look at the design of that wetland and make sure that it stays as authentic as possible. Um, within uh, the allowable approvals of the province. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Anything further? Ready for the question? Those in favor? Carried. It's me. I apologize. Um, I I do move that City Council give third reading to bylaw. Uh, uh, 2059-24 to amend land use bylaw 1804-14 to redistrict a portion of NE-13-46 no four yeah four six dash two four dash four from UR Urban Reserve to R4 high density residential. Moved by Councillor Aberley. Any discussion? Councillor Bronco. Thank you, uh, Tyre. I just go to Sue. We have no legal or action if something happens if they build this uh, development there and let's say it floods or something the water basement we have nothing they can come back after us oh, through the chair to council bronco we would put conditions within the development permit um, that would require any habit of habit <laughs> any place that houses humans uh, would have to be so far abo above the flood zone and that's a requirement of all permits thank you Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Item 12.2, third reading, electronic assessment and tax communications bylaw 2058-24. Council gave first and second reading to the proposed electronic assessment and tax communications bylaw at the regular meeting of Council on March 11, 2024. Administration wished to establish a process for sending assessment notices, tax notices, school support declarations, and other related documents electronically. Taxpayers will have op two options for tax re related communications electronic or paper notices. A financial system forms for assessment and tax notices have been updated to enable mailing, emailing to taxpayers. Attacked in Council's passage, package is a copy of the Electronic Assessment and Tax Communications Bylaw 2058-24. Administration is requesting third reading at this time. Councillor Blatz. I move that City Council give third and final reading to the Electronic Assessment and Tax Communication Bylaw 2058-24. Moved by Councillor Blatz. Any discussion? Councillor Bronco. Uh, thank you, uh, Tyler. Uh, just a question or a reminder. If we don't get electronic, we get a paperwork and we get charged $2 and something, correct? Is that? Through the chair to Councillor Bronco, the, the paper charge does not apply to tax notices. further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Item 12.3, Water and Wastewater Bylaw 2045-23. Good morning, Council. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 
The current water and wastewater bylaw, 2020-2022, uh, which was passed on December 12th, 2022, uh, came for first reading at council at the February 26th, 2024 meeting. Uh, the updated bylaw now includes some changes stating that utility accounts should be opened in the name of the property owner. In section 17.1 of schedule A, the general terms and conditions of utility services, the owner of a property shall apply for an account with Peace Hills Utilities in a form acceptable to Peace Hills Utilities and pay all applicable fees as a condition of obtaining utility services regardless of whether the provision of services requires installation of a new service connection or construction of any new facilities. This clause allows Peace Hills Utilities to collect utility fees from the property owner when there is a tenant change or when a tenant account is in arrears. The majority of the utility accounts in arrears currently are from rental properties. Uh, Peace Hills Utilities did make some operational changes to manage the accounts in arrears. The timelines have been adjusted so that accounts can no longer be in arrears for more than 60 days. The first notice will be sent after the first missed payment deadline. The final notice and water service disconnection will occur immediately after 60 days of a missed payment. And we are seeking second and third reading today. Councillor Aberly. I move that City Council give second reading to water and wastewater bylaw 2045-23 as presented. Moved by Councillor Aberly. Any discussion? Yeah. yeah, I will um, be supporting this motion um, as a member of the council appointed Peace Hills Utilities Inc. Board. Um, it is staggering how much money is actually in arrears and that continues to impact this community. It's, it's not just the board, it's being able to bring money in for our water services and unfortunately we have no way once a um, tenant versus a landowner or property owner um, leaves to be able to get that money except attach it to the next person that wants to get utilities at that site and I think we have found what is truly an unfair situation for renters in this community because that is once again creating a limit to people who can have lower income um, housing within our community. Thank you. Councilor Bronco. Thank you, Tyler. I guess this goes to administration. If a landowner sells a piece of property and utilities, the water bill it hasn't been paid, does that go on to the new owner who bought the property? Through the chair to council uh, to councillor Branco, um, it, if they pull what we call a tax certificate, we'll let them know what's outstanding on the property, um, and the owner that the, the, the lawyers the lawyer would usually do it the same way that they do the property tax adjustments, um, so it doesn't automatically go. But the owner is on the ho the new owner to ensure that they are purchasing a property that doesn't have those outstanding utilities. And, and we and we have legal opinion on that because it, it's odd that if somebody's buying a house he does the lawyer misses or something and uh, the guy didn't pay his bills it's just like taxes if the guy doesn't sell the house don't pay taxes why should the the new owner pay for something he never owned uh, through the chair to council bronco one of the um, issues that we're finding through it being a separate entity from the city is that we can't put the utility bill back on taxes so whereas before with a homeowner we could, um, Peace Hill's only option is to send it to collections. And what we've been finding is um, that uh, the majority of the people who are not paying are, are renters. And so when a property is owned and rented, there are usually multi-properties that are owned. That is someone's business. And the city, P Peace Hill's utilities, should not suffer because of somebody's business opportunity. So. Um, the board has had different discussions as well with looking at 
the $300 deposit and letting the homeowners know that we have that deposit, um, even though it's through a tenant, uh, they would still be required to pay that so that the homeowner is less likely to be saddled with that. Um, plus, they also have an opportunity to uh, take a, a bigger deposit to make sure that the utilities are covered. And with the utilities going to the homeowner's name, it's less likely to happen. But Peace Hills does not have an opportunity to put it on taxes as the city did. Understood, but my question was if somebody has a piece of property, sells it, and that new buyer have to pay that utility bill. Through the chair to Councillor Bronco, so it's treated differently for utilities and taxes. I need to make that clarification. For property taxes, it's levied against the property. Okay. So regardless, whoever the owner is, is liable. If somebody holds $100,000 on the pro on the property <coughs> and you purchase it without ensuring that all that adjustment is done, you hold because it's la the, the property taxes are levied not against an individual but against the property. And that's per the MGA. Like, that's what the MGA requires us to do. It's levied against the property, not an individual. It stays with the property. With utilities, when it was under the city, like Sue, men Sue mentioned, we had the, uh, um, if the name on title and the name on the utility account match, we can transfer under the MGA the utilities to the tax roll and it becomes taxes. However, with properties being hold by, owned by P sales, um, utilities being managed by P sales, we cannot do that. Moreover, most of our concerns with collections of utilities is not owners. A lot of it is tenants. So even if we had that opportunity, we couldn't transfer it anyway if the utility account wasn't in the homeowner's name. Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. I move that City Council gives third and final reading to Water and Wastewater Bylaw 2045-23 as presented. Moved by Councillor Aberley. Any discussion? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. And 13.1, general correspondence. Councillor Blotz. I move that City Council accepts the correspondence items for information. Moved by Councillor Blatz. Any discussion? Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried. 14.1, closed session to discuss items pertaining to the Freedom of Information and Protection Privacy Act, Section 18, advice from officials. Looking for a motion to go into closed session, please? Councillor Billingsley, ready for the question, those in favor? Carried, thank you.
welcome back. We're going to entertain a motion to come out of closed session, please. Council Bronco, those in favor? <coughs> Carried. Heading into new business. Anything to be added? I would like to add the item from earlier on on Virtual City Hall. 15-3. Sue, have we heard back from Emily? Uh, yes, we have. We need to bring that to another meeting. Okay. Perfect. Anything else? Looking for a motion to add the virtual city hall conversation. Those in favor? Carried. Thank you. 15 1. Notice of motion with Tasman Cultural Committee. <coughs> Uh, through the chair to council because uh, Karen does not have a mic I will just give you a brief overview on this one and uh, this was a request at a previous council meeting from Councillor Elliott so we will let him speak to uh, why he wants to have this on a future meeting thank you Sue Th uh, through the chair <clears throat> at the last meeting I would, you, would I, you like to make the motion and then you can speak to it sure I would move that City Council directs administration to explore the necessary requirements for a comprehensive terms of reference in order to establish a Wetaskiwin Culture Board by July 22-24, regular council meeting. Moved by Council Elliott. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at the last meeting, I, I made a suggestion that we have a regional recreation and culture board and many good points were brought up about why we should have a separate culture board and so I thought if that's the way people feel then I would I would bring that up as a motion okay any further discussion councillor Aberly uh, thank you mayor again to through the chair to council um, I will fully support this I think that um, culture is important in this community and um, making sure that we look at it properly and give it the importance that it deserves through a advisory board would be of utmost benefit to this community. So I would like to thank Councillor Elliott for bringing it forward. Anything further? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. Item 15-2, notice motion, political parties. Uh, I move that City Council supports Alberta municipalities in speaking out against the changes proposed to the Municipal Government Act in regards to including political parties at the municipal level. Currently, Alberta municipalities, through a motion, or a resolution, excuse me, of its members to not have political parties included <coughs> on local ballots, uh, has been working and looking for support from other municipalities across the province to do that individually <coughs> as well. We'll open it up to discussion. Comments, questions? We're ready for the question, those in favor? Carried. I move that City Council directs administration to write a letter to our local MLA about keeping a political party out of local elections. Again, speaking to the first motion, um, keeping local politics at the local level as opposed to um, having political parties have a say in, in local decisions. Any discussion, comments, or questions? Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just suggest that we send copies to the, the Premier and the Minister of Municipal Affairs as well. Are you making that as an amendment? I'm not sure if that was procedure that we usually follow or not. It used to be, but... I... No, if, through the motion, will, it's just to the local MLA. Okay, so. I will make an amendment. Uh, if I may, that, that we also make sure that copies are sent to the Premier and the Minister of Municipal Affairs. Amended by Councillor Elliott. Any discussion? Thank you for adding that. That's a good addition. We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. Back to the motion. Any further discussion? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Carried. I move that City Council directs administration to do a social media campaign through city social media platforms in regards to keeping political parties out of local elections. Any comments, questions, or discussion? We're ready for the question. Those in favor? Opposed? 
sorry, is that in favor or opposed? Thank you. Uh, and 15.3 was the added item for the virtual city hall. Earlier we heard a presentation from administration regarding some other options. And I would like to, I don't know how you would like the motion to read. City Council directs administration to research other options for virtual city hall. Uh, to the chair, so do you want it brought back prior to budget? Because in the RFD, we were planning to do the research, bring it back as a business case as part of the 2025 budget process Okay. later this year. But if you want it back sooner, it's, then... It's up to administration in terms of their timing on when they were going to be working on it. Yeah, but budget is what we had planned for, so if you wanted it sooner, then... I don't. Okay. It's, no, Perfect. totally up to you. So if it's already coming for budget, then don't worry about it. Perfect. I rescind my motion. Anything further? Adjourned at 1216.